So I'm be talking today about Miniscript BIP 119 and DLCs, also known as scripts and smart contracts on Bitcoin. I'll be talking largely uh, as well as about scripts and smart contracts. So I'm, I'll be making an introduction first and, and then I'll go on through the to. I'll be able to share these slides with you uh, at the end of the presentation during the question uh, period. And we'll be anyways, we'll be posting this on YouTube, like I said. So so if you miss something, you want to rewatch something, you'll be able to do it later on. So thank you for being here once again my name is gustavo for those who don't know me so we'll like i said we'll go through a little background then what are smart contracts what are scripts what are mini script dlcs bip 119 and then i'll drop a word on something known as simplicity so first of all i'll present verify for those who don't know us uh, so verify we have three branches of the of the company first of all we buy and sell bitcoin for any amount up to one million dollars a day we have a, a better site that's coming up where people will be able to do this through a, through a web platform and and not have to deal with us personally uh but we still we we'll still be able, focusing on on a premium service for those who want it uh calling our clients uh, adding extra value to, to to the proposition to differentiate ourselves from other platforms because that's what we think has been missing uh, in in the ecosystem and extra hands for for people who aren't sure when the, when they're making decisions whether they they're sending it to the right address whether they're using the right wallet whether they they're they're using the right tools so we we help with that and and we wrap this up in our service through buying and selling Bitcoin. So consulting is, is has always been our expertise. And so, so we consult companies through case studies, data analysis, and software development. So if you need help developing any type of Bitcoin project, just approach us and, and we'll help you with that. Uh, finally, we'll help investors secure their Bitcoin. So we have packages and services regarding Bitcoin security on our website that you can uh, look up and uh, uh, on at verify.io you'll find all the information you you need for that. So if w whichever you're holding ten thousand or one million dollars in Bitcoin, we have a solution for you um, from hardware wallets we, that we that we leverage, but beyond them as well. So a lot of people are satisfied with their current setup, and and I wouldn't ask them to change it, but a lot of people are are looking for maybe a little extra. So that's where we can help. So then myself. Gustavo Flores Chase. I'm a head of product and research at Verify. Uh, I'm a developer in JavaScript, React, and Node, and I'm passionate about Bitcoin, uh, and I'm a firm believer in free markets. So this is just a brief introduction about me. You can always contact me with any technical question you have on Bitcoin, uh, either on Twitter or through email, and I'll gladly respond. So first of all, I begin this presentation, as I begin most of them, by just reminding you, you we're talking about Bitcoin here. So uh, it's important to always go from this premise that we're talking about censorship resistant money with limited supply and and this is what when, when i'll be talking about bitcoin smart contracts policies uh, applications this is always the premise right that, that we have something that has limited supply and it is censorship resistant we're not talking about trading tokens we're not talking about trading um i don't know um uh, ethereum we're not talking about uh, using uh, commodities for smart contracts we're talking about something that's limited supply and censorship resistance so it's scarce and it, you can do whatever you want with it so i'll jump right on to it uh, Bitcoin works uh, with something called Bitcoin script, which is, uh, is, is basically the language that allows you to say, uh, hey, I'll be sending Bitcoins to this address and whoever has the private key related to that address can spend those Bitcoins. Or it also allows me to say, uh, hey, uh, I want to hold these Bitcoins with my friend and we need both of our signatures to spend those Bitcoins. So these policies um, they are simplified in the user experience, so the user doesn't have to see, let's say, the complexity behind them, but they all uh, come down to something called Bitcoin script, which is the, the stack based language in the sense that things pile up, the policies pile up on top of them, uh, and it, in, in the sense that it determines the spending policy. So um, this is a very non Turing complete language, similar to something called Forth. That was written in the 70s um, and it's 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 on purpose to do something non-turing complete right for security 
for bug free uh, experience and and this is what satoshi was really really looking for once once he made uh bitcoin script and and once he adopted it for bitcoin so uh however he has some problems given that uh one problem would be size limit so you cannot make like very advanced scripts for now um or let's say on, in terms of multi-signature contracts you cannot allow more than 15 signatures uh when let's say we're the same access to the bitcoins and it's it's hard to write let's say uh it's not only that it's hard to write it's, it's that it's hard to verify that it's doing what it's supposed to do it's hard to mix it with other scripts it's hard to establish a standard throughout the his industry that will use the same scripts to to achieve the same goals um, and and also it has limited functionality. So so this is obvious. Uh, you cannot do uh, multiple things with it. However, uh, I still think it's it's interesting enough. So multi signature time locks, uh, and it also pushes developers and 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 let's say uh, people building these things to to think uh, with a limited functionality and and to mix things together to obtain better results, right? And that's how we see the Lightning Network appearing and similar type of, of, of applications and network uh, because, precisely because we uh, it has limited functionality, uh, you can innovate. It, it pushes for innovation a little bit more if you want to go over uh, the, the limit that's proposed. So here's an example a little bit how we would uh, go on if, if we wanted to build a script. Uh, you can see it on the image right here if if you if you are, ha are listening with a video on. Uh, so you can see that the step one uh, is about pushing Bob's signature onto the stack. And that's what I mean by stack-based language. Like you see, uh, we, we begin by Bob's signature, and then we go on by the pub, Bob's public key, and then we go on by uh, opdop, op hash 160. It means the policies that we would implement uh, on, on this signature on this public key. So here's uh, here's an example. And stack base means that they just pile up one on top of the other. And if you want to, let's say, change the, the, the first one, well, you have to remove uh, all the interior ones, uh, change that one, uh, build it from top, from bottom to top once again. So uh, however regular apps exist and use Bitcoin. So a lot of people will say, but ah, uh, yeah, but this means you cannot make apps with Bitcoin. So why why then are these companies making billions and, and satisfying millions of customers with spot trading, with futures trading, with lending, and, and new things coming out all the time, right? Um, and people will say, yeah, but those are not smart contracts. So what? Like, uh, a customer doesn't care whether something is smart contract or just a regular software app, uh, web or mobile app. Not exactly. That's not exactly what the customer is asking himself. So uh, once we're building these type of products, we, we still got to think about that. So will BitMEX or will uh, something like, um, I don't know, MakerDAO succeed? Because they're basically competing for the same market. However, BitMEX is offering me uh, an user experience 100 times faster, cheaper, and better servers. Uh, better service and, and more secure and people will say yeah but it's not trustless and and that's the whole difference or it doesn't leverage cryptography or it doesn't leverage blockchain so so it's not verifiable or, or things like that right and or maybe maybe they have a point and and maybe and that's kind of what what i'm looking at today and why, why i'm doing this presentation because maybe they have a point and maybe there's something more but still this is still possible and this these applications use bitcoin leverage bitcoin uh, in the sense that uh paypal leveraged the us dollar right uh, in that sense you can build applications right it's just not paypal is just not using a smart contract developed by the federal reserve they're not when they're making transactions the federal reserve is not necessarily aware uh, at every update of every transaction. Um, so regular apps exist and use Bitcoin, and we always have to keep that in mind once we're, we're thinking about these things, because these players are ruling the market, and as far as I know, they have, they're have they going nowhere else, okay? So then we talk about smart contracts, and people talk about Ethereum, and now DeFi, or before it was ICOs, uh, at some point it was NFTs, at some point it was uh security tokens so 
what are smart contracts? Uh, I think the best way to describe it is the, the way that I illustrated right here. So it's leveraging applied cryptography and a blockchain network to achieve contracts that will enable applications often in a trustless way. So that means we use cryptography and uh, usually a blockchain and we can do contracts that are often in a trustless way, but most of the time they will be automated. That's what we're looking for automated at the blockchain layer or at the at the basic network layer of the of the cryptocurrency network right uh, in terms of ethereum it would be tokens enabled by the ethereum network to let's say uh, make lending uh, like uh, MakerDAO or compound does or uh, do future trading like uniswap does or uh, do token uh, games in-game tokens like nfts like i don't remember the name of of the one doing that but there's a, that's kind of what we're looking for how can we automate at the basic layer um these things so that they don't have to they're not uh, consequential to uh, other trade-offs that we make on upper layers right so if we're building uh, bitmex like uh, or coinbase and blockfi we're using React, we're using a, um, just the, the web uh, protocols by default, um, and we're having to deal with all these uh, all, all extra uh, consequences that uh, at these layers, right? Here, we just deal with all the, the protocol uh, rules of the blockchain network, and that's it. But however, marketing and tech different, and this is a very important point, and this is kind of the point why I'm not talking in Ethereum Montreal and why we don't, I, I personally don't think Ethereum is very interesting because marketing and tech differ, right? So marketing is about saying these things are smart contracts and these things are trustless and these things are decentralized or they enable applications, things like that. But at the end of the day, Compound and BitMEX or Compound and BlockFi are the same thing. However, BlockFi and BitMEX have 100 times more customers, right? So, and how are they the same thing? Well, because Compound, like MakerDAO, like Uniswap, like all these uh, smart contracts will always have a administrator key that can freeze everything or can confiscate all funds or can reverse transactions. So this is not trustless. And, and it's off, sometimes it could be, sometimes it has been, uh, often not. And not only when it's not it's uh, not only sometimes it's trustless but often when it is it has other it suffers from other security risks and that's kind of an issue as well right if if funds get hacked well it's not very trustless it's maybe trustless but it's not very secure so this is what you enable by going with a Turing complete language and with very advanced uh, type of applications that you're trying to build on uh, a foundation layer. So smart contracts on Bitcoin. If, if we're going with this definition that it's just about leveraging uh, cryptography and a blockchain network and often in a trustless way, but not necessarily where there's a lot of things being built on Bitcoin that are like partially leveraging, uh, that are leveraging these things and are partially trustless. So the first one would be actually one that's actually pretty trustless, which is the Lang network. And I've made a presentation about Beyond Transactions Lightning Network apps that you can check on YouTube at Bitcoin Montreal. Uh, just write down Lightning Network apps and you'll find it. We're talking about applications like uh, chat applications that you can do like with, on the Lightning Network, like WhatsApp on the Lightning Network, uh, things like uh, uh, API uh, payment systems where developers can pay uh, with Bitcoin uh, in, an, in a programmable way. Uh, ma many things that, uh, that that are being built on the Lightning Network are are like smart contract type of apps that would get called like that in Ethereum land or in other cryptocurrency land. So I made a presentation you can look on, on YouTube on that. But there's also other type of examples such as multi-signature federated sidechain. So a multi-signature is a uh, spending policy, uh, kind of like an automated spending policy, uh, I would say. And federated sidechain like Liquid, yes, it's a little bit trusted because uh, it's a group of companies uh, holding on to some Bitcoins. But how is that different from everything that gets called smart contracts and DeFi and, and, 
or in Ethereum land or or something similar, right? So Liquid enables tokens. It enables uh, Lightning Network on top of Liquid. It will enable Simplicity, which will be a, another language that I'll talk a little bit more at the end. Um, so RGB is also something built on the Lightning Network, by the way. I forgot to say that before. And it competes with Liquid. I actually have a presentation on that that will come next Thursday that I'm posting right after this one. RGB versus Liquid to check up how tokens are being built and are ready to, uh, I'm not talking about future projects, RGB and Liquid. And, and not exactly, RGB is not exactly in production mode, Liquid is. Um, but still, so these are all things that would get called smart, more smart contract. And scriptless scripts as well, probably make a presentation on that in a couple of weeks. Scriptless scripts are exactly uh, the contrary of what these are. These are uh, blockchain leveraging applications that use on-chain transactions for every simple action they make. So they're not private, they're expensive, and they're polluting a blockchain network. So instead, scriptless script do the exact opposite by enabling smart contracts, uh, such as adapter signatures, which are atomic swaps, so you can trade a Bitcoin and uh, Tether on Liquid Zoom automatically uh, with a scriptless script. But the difference is they're scriptless. So they're, they don't appear on a blockchain. They don't cost anything. They're just cryptography leveraging contracts that work without uh, any type of pollution on the blockchain. They just work by revealing a secret, by signing a, a signature, and that completes the puzzle that the other user needs to uh, move funds without anybody's consent, right? So, and I'll, I can talk a little bit more about that in during the question period. And if you guys would like, and, and during the, um, uh, and during another presentation, sorry. So I'll jump in to Miniscript. So to, to jump in to Miniscript, I'll be making uh, a little analogy with uh, something most people studying in software, uh, the uh, engineering or computer science would understand. So once we're, let's say when we're, we're let's say I compare this to uh, to just regular lang computer languages, programming languages, right? So there's multiple levels of programming languages in, in the real world, let's say in the world outside of where we are right now, uh, blockchain and Bitcoin. In just regular world, we have um, high-level languages, which we, you would know as uh, C++, JavaScript, Java, Python, whatever whatever language you've heard of, it's probably just a high-level language. And then you have tra assembly languages, and here's an image of what they would look like. So I, I studied assembly language in computer science university. It's mostly just letters and numbers. Uh, that me have different meanings, like um, established meanings, depending on the assembly language. Once again, there's many assembly languages, and that translates or assembles into machine language, which is the binary code that that we've all probably heard of, which is zeros and ones, which then uh, influences the the hardware, which then does the action that we've desired, right? But developers nowadays will only see the high level language and everything is done in the background through compilers and, and linkers. Uh, and, and that's important to understand for Miniscript because script isn't like a high level language that people can use. And, and before, I wanna just say this, before when, because people have coded in binary language at some point, I remember a story by my uncle saying me that he well my father told me the story my uncle used to go to uh, to engineering school uh had a little cards uh, with him and they had to put holes in the cards and get them inside a computer and that would come that that would be programming that would be communicating with the computer through binary code basically and there was a lot of issues with that very complex hard to analyze hard to compose, same thing with assembly. High level is, is exactly where we want to be in terms of uh, modern development. And it's something of the analogy I want you to understand when it comes to Miniscript. So Miniscript is a little bit similar in the sense that it's another level language for Bitcoin scripts to construct them in a more structured way to enable analysis, 
composition, generic signing, so basically testing, um, kind of like an assembly language that translates to a machine one because we're very far from JavaScript and actually, or, or, or C++. And actually, there could be another layer of something that translates into Miniscript. And that then translates to scripts, right? That that could happen. That's that's very open to happen, and that's probably where this is going. Uh, however, we we now have Miniscript, which looks like this: this being script, and this being Miniscript. So it allows you to break it down uh, more, to enable analysis, to establish a standard. Where, by the way, this would be all. I think I don't have to say this, but this would be abstracted from the user. This is a developer type. Uh, Pose. And uh, I can show you a demo of how this works. Uh, but basically, uh, let me just go here. Okay, so if you see here now, I'm on bitcoin.sepa.b slash miniscript, which is the website um, that launched the, the miniscript language. And uh, here, here it's interesting. So it says, despite being limited in functionality, is it still high non-trivial to uh, talking about Bitcoin script and uh, the motivations behind the creation of Miniscript, given a combination of two of spending policy conditions, finding the most economical script to implement. It. So these are things that happen. Like uh, script is is not very clear how it's going to transmit in Bitcoin fees, uh, and 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 so this is a clear reason why you would want Miniscript to better analyze each component of your script or subsets. Uh, or let's say another example, given two scripts, construct a script that implements a composition of their spending conditions. Example giving a multisig where one of the keys is another multisig. That's not possible right now. However, theoretically, it could be. Uh, and Miniscript could allow something like that to be deployed securely, right? Uh, so here is a little bit of a policy to Miniscript compiler. So here would be the policies. Um, and then I compile, and this is the Miniscript output I get. Uh, this would be just writing policy. So this, you see there's basically no difference. It's just a question of uh, little syntax. And spending cost analysis, you see this is perfect for exactly determining the, the first question that was asked here, finding the most economical script to implement things. Uh, this cannot be analyzed through script. This can only be analyzed through Miniscript. Uh, and here, here, this I find more interesting because here we could write a mini script and we could analyze it and it gets broken down. Uh, we have a, a reference table here to see what everything means. And this is the resulting script structure, right? Um, so a lot of people are working on this. I'd say there's another project where, which aims to build a mini script in a more simple way. Um, However, this will be a long process, and this is a, it's a very important to keep in mind, but particularly from the perspective or of the inventors of these technologies, they they want to accentuate the point that it's important to to understand that this will be a long process. This doesn't mean that uh, scripts will be written uh, like Ethereum, Solidity, smart contracts are written today, like uh, maybe in a couple of years. But this is a very long process where. It's, it's a question of establishing standards, making them secure, um, and then um, and, and then updating that and, and creating extra tools, right? Like I said, maybe another high level language and, and things like that. So I'll, I'll change subjects pretty quickly. I'll talk about DLCs. So what are, what are DLCs? Uh, they're called discrete long contracts. And a question people often ask themselves is, what about an external input to detect the result of a smart contract? So let's say you usually have this on other blockchain smart contracts. Let's say two individuals are betting on the future price of Ethereum or Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is at $10,000 now. And they want to get to uh, some one bets that's going to 12000 uh, at least for the, in, the, in the next month. And there's an external uh, party that would, uh, without revealing the policies of the contract to him, without revealing who wins when and who wins how, he acts as an oracle and tells us on the Bitcoin network what is the, the Bitcoin price through cryptographic hashes, right? This would all be uh, illustrated with cryptography. And once it hits the condition that what 
it went beyond uh, 12,000 during the month while well, the the money gets sent the way of the of of the person who bet that that would happen right so it's it still relies on an oracle so this is similar to issues smart contracts have on other all basically all other type of blockchain platforms where they're using third party because you have to use a third party if you want to talk about external API calls. Uh, they they have a trust problem because you have to trust that the oracle is saying the truth at the end of the day. Maybe he doesn't know, in like in the case of discrete lock contracts, who would win. So that would decrease the incentive to cheat in, in his perspective if he's colluding with someone. But still, he can still a trusted party. So DLCs work on the Lightning Network to scale, which is very interesting because at first they were limited to the, the, the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain network, which doesn't have uh, infinite output, uh, input, excuse me. So, but however the Lightning Network does, and you can just create a DLC, constantly update it on the Lightning Network, settle on the blockchain if needed if for a dispute resolution, and they are perfect for future trading contracts. So Crypto Garage is working on them. I think Shirtbits is also a company working on DLCs. Uh, they have Shirtbits has a demo on uh, YouTube that's very interesting. That I've, I think I've also linked at the end of the references in this presentation. And uh, so, so DLCs are, are are awesome for that. Something that a lot of people were we're looking for to do on the Bitcoin network is, is finally possible with DLCs. And you can go on GitHub and you can start playing with the code. It's it's already available. I don't think the Lightning Network code is available yet. Uh, however, it people are working on it at Crypto Garage mostly. Uh, so here I have a little illustration that I took from their website. So you see first is about uh, contribution of collateral. So that would probably go into a, a multi-sig and locked with a, with it can only move with this condition. If this hash with this signature is revealed by the Oracle, the hash being equal to the amount, uh, the price amount of Bitcoin. So uh, settlement then goes down with uh, the Oracle and uh, and excuse me first would be about fixating the rate with the oracle um and then would be about uh, settling the contract through the, the the oracle's response right the oracle trust remains and i want to make this point absolutely clear because this doesn't mean that we have created trustless futures contract and and a lot of people will try to market it this way particularly on other blockchain networks because they have this since a couple of uh, years, I think, because they have solidity and languages that are very bug uh, enabling, so they basically allow you to do anything. But DLCs are done in a very conscious way and, and, and a private way as well. So if an oracle is not exactly, if this is done at scale, this is done, uh, the oracle wouldn't be necessarily conscious of every player in, in, in this type of contract. So they wouldn't be in, and if it's private, well, it just uh, reinforces the, the the fact that it, it makes it harder for people to call you, right? So I'll go right away on Bit 119. So I think I'll go first with this image where you can see what normal transactions look like on the Bitcoin network. They are, let's say, uh, they, they just cost a lot of money because let's say this guy wants to send funds to this person. He has to make a transaction. Then these two want to send funds to this person. They have to make a multi-sig transaction. It has a cost as well. So it's then batch transactions happened and, and people could send basically funds to uh, someone to a lot of people at the same time. They could send uh, um, Bitcoin. Uh, I, I can do a batch transaction with a lot of many wallets, let's say Electrum, and I can send uh, 15 or even 1,000 transactions at the same time. Within the same transaction, I just send 1,000 outputs to different addresses, and I've paid, let's say, 1,000 employees, and, and that's it. That would be it. And that this would cost, 
like this costs 70 percent less than just making them all separate or even more and and we've made an analysis on that that you can find on our website um it's called the uh, case study and and we did it a couple months ago mm -hmm. and actually we found that that uh, 500 million dollars would have been saved in with segwit and batching if people would adopt these technologies to save on blockchain fees so um batching is already a known thing however check template verify brings this to another level so how this how do i put this would be batch transactions are a group transaction that often exchanges and companies make and they are they are uh, done in a way in, in moments where fees could be very high so let's say uh, bitmex every uh, i think they make like uh, when people request uh, withdraw they make it all at, at once once during every day every day they do it at like i think 6 a.m eastern time uh, because they're in asia and they just batch all their transactions I think they don't even batch them, Bitmax, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, they just drop a bunch. No, they don't batch them. They just drop a bunch of transactions at the same time, and they pay a lot of fees, and they increase the fees dramatically. This happens every day. And um, because and they could batch it, and fees would be lower, but still, they would still drop a lot of Bitcoin uh, transactions at the same time, which would rise fees. And that makes them spend a lot of money and fees, and that makes other people that are making transactions spend a lot of money on fees who, are, who need to send their transactions right away so check template verify allows you to instead of making the transaction now is promising to your users that you will send them the transactions but you're not going to send through a crypto smart contract uh, but you're not going to send them to them right now because the fees are so high right now you would much rather program for this to be sent, uh, let's say in 12 hours, in 24 hours, in 72 hours, once um, the fees are much lower, but you would still keep your promise that you're gonna send them and you would still give that promise uh, at, a, at, a, at, at the precise time they, they, they ask for it, right? Uh, so this doesn't work in all situations because sometimes people want immediate delivery, but in some situations, it does work and it does allow uh, trust to happen, uh, well, things to be done in a trustless way because they're guaranteed by the Bitcoin network. So uh, with OPCTV, you can protect your stack. So it, it no, it's not only about spending less on fees, it's also about making custody solutions that can only, let's say you make a vault, which is just uh, imagine a physical vault. Uh, and the physical vault can has uh, or the vault digital goal vault can only send transactions to this these addresses so if someone gets to my house they cannot if they access my vault well my bitcoin vault or if they hack my system where well, they cannot send transactions to them because the transactions can only be sent to uh, what has been established by the the OPCTV smart contract, and it's exactly it's it, the, the, it's in the name. So the the part template, it's exactly that. So the fact that it, you can make a template of what your transactions are going to be later, is the smart contract you're doing to uh, tell users you're going to pay them later because you're creating the template and you're publishing that template on the blockchain uh through a hash right it's all cryptography and that confirms to the other users that you will you have no choice but to follow through this once you want to spend less on fees once you want to move from your vault to another system um and to protect yourself and to protect others as well so finally you can do supercharged lightning so channels without interactive setups as many as you like routing as many hlc's as you want so this just means we get lightning to another level uh much easier less of uh, interactive setups so this means less of punishing less risk in lightning because uh people cannot just exit transact the lightning channel with with, with the same type of conditions they are more restricted um since they're applying it to a template so and also it's about 
making uh, things more into a standard. Check template verify as mini script, as DLCs. Bring standards to the Bitcoin network, to the to the ecosystem, in sense of uh, making things uh, more compatible into our wallets and also way more scalable in, in terms of deployment and development. So here you see what the congestion control transactions would look like. Uh, first, instead of going this, this part, which is the, the template transaction, can turn into this. It can have many options as well. You can say, hey, this would be option one, option B, option whatever, you know? So, and you can also, back, uh, the, do it in many rounds. So let's say my template says that I'm going to send um, 15 outputs to 15 different addresses. Well, I don't have to send, it's not about waiting fees to drop and sending 15 at the same time. Progressively as well. I can, um, from the template I have, I can go and send three out of 15 now and then send another five and then send the rest, right? So I can do this progressively as well. And uh, we've written an article on this, at Verify My Check, my colleague wrote it. Uh, we wrote it for BTSC Academy, uh, Endless Bitcoin Optimization, BIP 119. If you want to read a little bit more about this, you can go here and, and look. Also, it, it also talks about the BIP process uh, that this is going through because this, can, this, that, this is the only thing that I presented uh, that isn't live yet. This is still in the works, but I find it very interesting and I find it also uh, very probable that we, it will get adopted eventually. So this is why I present it. Uh, you can look it up on utxos.org. You can check this up. Um, and here are my references. So, um, but utxos.org, UTXOs excuse me, is the website where you can find the, the whole information on BIP 119. Uh, so Magical Bitcoin, I, I'll, I'll check this out with you guys, Magical Bitcoin, because I think it's worth to, to look at. It's uh, like, it's a project that aims to build a collection of tools and libraries to design a solid foundation for Bitcoin wallets. So solid foundation for Bitcoin wallets is the goal of all the things that I present. So mini script, uh, I'd say DLC is not exactly, but BIP 119 probably, but particularly mini script, that's the purpose, right? Uh, solid foundation for Bitcoin wallets. But playground is something that's available in Magic Bitcoin, where you can write mini script, uh, you can generate things, and uh, you can use descriptors, which are another technology uh, to make uh, more, create more standards in in uh, spending policies and uh, and 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 also uh, derivation paths, and going from a private key or a seed phrase to a, to a, um, an address. Uh, so descriptors are also part of the mix. Anyways, here's a playground you can use. You can install it on your own computer as well uh, and have it available on your command line. So these are all tools that to start playing with Miniscript and, and, and new technologies. Um, so this is what I see as the future of, of all these things, right? We would have uh, wallets running in uh, enabling Miniscript contracts uh, through standards. Uh, BIP 119, particularly for the enterprise level applications, we would probably have firms specialize in fee engineering, leveraging BIP 119 and similar smart contracts just to save fees here and there. And that would become an industry on itself. Uh, we would probably have DLCs and, and uh, the smart contract like uh, DeFi and Bitcoin and, and infinitely scalable with uh, the Lightning Network. And on, on top of Miniscript, we would have, uh, like I said, the scriptors. We're looking in, people are looking into PSBT as uh, something, uh, uh, what's PSBT again? Um, I forgot. Um, PSBT stands for a partially signed Bitcoin transaction. So that would be another standard that's that's very easy to, uh, to, 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 to to become a standard, that's exactly the purpose because you don't want uh, the JavaScript library to be the standard of, of, of the industry. You want 
things that are into the protocol, like PSBT, like Miniscript, uh, because it translates into Bitcoin script, like descriptors, uh, as let's say the the foundation of wallets, and and then you you get on with the libraries, and 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 then you get on with the development kits and everything to to get an easier uh, development and deployment of wallets. Uh, but this is the core. So simplicity, uh, I don't have a tab on simplicity, but I can probably show you um, a new little article they wrote at Blockstream that I found very interesting. So, oh no, this is the research paper. Okay, so just release. So there is a preview on simplicity, which means that developers can go on GitHub and, and try it out on just a regular test network, uh, not like the public test network, but a local test network. And you would, uh, it's, it's called the Jets release. And what Simplicity does is it's, 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 it's a full-fledged programming language, like blockchain, um, kind of like Solidity would be. It's at that level. It's not, we're not talking about script or mini script here. We're talking about something that developers will be able to write uh, and create very varying type of contracts. However, it's Bitcoin-like uh, compatible. So it's built for liquid or Bitcoin networks because Ethereum works in a very different way. And it's also done in, in um, how can I say this? It's not Turing complete, uh, and but it can verify Turing complete uh, scripts. So that's the difference. It cannot uh, construct them, but it can verify them, which is kind of the purpose of a blockchain, right? You don't want the blockchain to compute things. You want the, the blockchain to verify things. Well, in my perspective, you want the blockchain to uh, resolute verification of, uh, of, uh, of policies, not even verify. Verifying can be done uh, at the user level on the like, network. But if we're having a dispute, then I would go on the blockchain and I will leverage the blockchain to verify the authenticity of the cryptography and the transaction. But that would, that's, in my opinion, that's only necessary in a dispute resolution level or in a very big transaction where you, you want to be completely sure, right? Uh, anyway, simplicity uh, allows you to code uh, vaults. It allows you to call swaps. It allows you to call future contracts. It allows you to call to call decentralized uh, exchanges. Basically, many things that are available uh, on Ethereum can be available on Bitcoin with simplicity, but in a secure way uh, and built. Uh, it's it's built like a very functional language, right? Uh, on the other side, Solidity is built like JavaScript. Uh, so that's the, the the core difference, I'd say. Uh, things you can do on simplicity that I really like. I don't know if it talks about this here, uh, but things you can do are like you, you can build, um, um, you can implement Taproot or Schnorr signatures or zero knowledge uh, cryptography uh, contracts without making soft forks for each of them. Like you can write them in simplicity and they can work in liquid or in Bitcoin if it eventually gets into Bitcoin. It will get into liquid this year, so and and it's available to play. Uh, so this is why let's say Taproot is not being implemented on liquid because it will just be coded up in simplicity once simplicity is on liquid. Uh, so it's kind of a shortcut to enable future um, uh, cryptography or just for people to 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 use them at the user level, right? It doesn't have to be at the protocol level uh, with simplicity. Taproot can just be enabled in a in a contract between two users. So thank you for this for listening, uh, and I'll take your questions now. But you can follow us at Verify.io or Verify BTC on Twitter, and you can find me on Twitter as well at Gustavo G uh, underscore Flores, or you can contact me uh, at Gustavo at Verify.io on my email. So I'll. Take the questions now. I'll mute myself. I'll, I'll check into the chat, chat first, but I'll stop presenting and I'll take questions. So the chat people have said, good intro to Verify.io. Thank you, David. Um, a few of us remember those cards. Um, I'm not sure which cards you were talking about, but I guess that was when I was in the middle of the presentation. 
Um, so then uh, ah, the programming punch cards. Ah, there you go. That that makes sense. Right. Uh, th that must bring memories. So thank you, Francois, for listening. Um, I'm, I'm glad you, you liked the presentation and thought it was great. Thank you, Rene, as well. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you found it interesting. Emmanuel, as well, and Bahid. Thank you all. Uh, does anybody have any questions concerning the subject or any other type of Bitcoin discussion they would like to have, or, or simply not necessarily a question, comment, or, or an idea that you want to present? I'll mute myself if anybody wants to take the, the mic. Can I ask a question about the oracles? Hello? Go for it. Uh, sh sure. Um, so I was wondering that the oracles, uh, when they get the information from out there, they usually should wait till the next block for the information to be made a uh, fair game for everyone. Is that right? Uh, question. I had a little bit of a sound issue at that moment. Okay, so, so what I mean basically is uh, I assume that for the oracles to work, uh, they when they get the information from out there, uh, the information will be uh, transmitted to the blockchain with a lag of 10 minutes for the next till the next block gets added. Uh, is that a right assumption or do the oracles work in a faster way? Well, that would be a good assumption if we were talking about DLCs on the blockchain. But like I said, uh, DLCs are now possible on the Lightning Network as well. So that means that you don't have to wait for the, 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 block, the next block. You can just do an update on your contract in an off-chain manner. Uh, and that allows you to to just do them instantly. And, and that's what's crazy about the Lightning Network is that you can just make updates at any time on your transactions and we can all it, it can then be reported on the blockchain later if if that's what people want if if people don't agree during the deals the off-chain dlc and someone wants to dispute the the authenticity of the the oracle response well they can just verify the the signature which is the the, the crucial bitcoin part um they can verify the signature and uh, the policy as well that it corresponds to the policy on the bitcoin network by closing the line network channel and bringing it all on chain so to answer your question briefly uh yes you you don't need to wait for the the bitcoin blockchain next block but uh, you can do so if you want to be completely sure uh, this is working out the way it's supposed to be thanks perfect does anybody else want to bring a question um, or, or have a discussion? Yes. You mentioned uh, the use of check template verify as a means of <clears throat> avoiding paying high fees. Um, what would be the difference between simply putting a transaction out there with a one Satoshi per byte uh, fee attachment um, compared to using check template verify as a, as a you know, uh, smart contract means of paying in the future when the fee is low enough? Is it simply to avoid the replaced by fee action? Well, I'd say, first of all, I'd say that um, you most nodes have, uh, they disable transactions that have a low fee after a certain period of time. So if you, the danger of putting one Satoshi per byte out there and keeping it that, that, uh, it's usually from the fact that um, it will disappear at some point. So it's not exactly it's it's for your users that you're sending your transactions. It's not it's not a confirmation that you're making the transaction. Uh, an unconfirmed transaction is not considered secure, right? So, however, uh, a um, check template verify transaction is considered secure. It's considered as a promise that this will happen later. Um, so that's, I'd, I'd say from the user's perspective, that's where the difference would be. It's, uh, it's just the fact that once the, the check template transaction settles, which can be done in 10 minutes because it's, it can be a very compressed transaction. So the, the user sending it, it's not very concerned with the fee he's paying, even if he's paying the higher rate. Well, 
that just gives the guarantee to the users that from now on, uh, in, in as fast as 10 minutes, I've guaranteed you all that you will receive your money uh, in the next, let's say, 72 hours. This comparing to this to uh, one Satoshi per byte would be saying, okay, well, here's the transaction, but it can be removed, it can disappear, it can be forgotten, uh, but you can trust me. Uh, it's it's still it's there's still let's say a little bit of uh, of assurance, but it's 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 much smaller. So I guess that would be the difference in, in that regard. But if you trust the, the other person then it makes sense. So uh, I'd say smart contracts and, and things that are trying to be smart contracts are aiming at the fact that they want to reduce the trust between the parties. Uh, but if you already have trust between the parties, what you described could very much work. Thank you. Really clear answer, dude. Francois asks, uh, do you know if there are some basic step-by-step -step Miniscript video tutorials all or is the magical bitcoin website the best place to try and learn uh okay so that first question is uh i i'd say you should check out this website uh by dot b slash minuscript uh, and i'll share this uh this presentation right now uh so that you can get access to the references so you should check the main website um that explains it because that also includes the miniscript reference which is what you will need if you want to start building miniscript scripts um and it also has correctness properties uh and way more information that is available on magical bitcoin i say magical bitcoin is more for uh, once you really want to play with it uh, but first to understanding, you would have to go on bitcoin.sepa.b slash miniscript. And there's something else that um, someone released recently, a developer named Shazek release. And I'm trying to find it. Um, I'll find it soon. And that is also something that you can use as well. Um, okay, so basically he... Me, uh, Shizek has built a uh, high level script and languages um, that is based on the Miniscript policy. So he has built another level of Miniscript. Uh, I can send it right now here as well. Uh, I just sent it on the chat. So Mini Minis, which is a Miniscript based scripting language for Bitcoin contracts. So it's based on Miniscript. Uh, I'd say it's a little bit more simpler, but it's, I'd say it's, it's just an implementation because Miniscript is not an implementation. It's it's, it's just a set of uh, rules. It's just a standard um, a protocol, let's say, and you would have you would need to use an implementation of Miniscript. So Minis C, which I just sent, is an implementation of Miniscript, and uh, you can use, you probably would like to use that. It, it has, on the GitHub page that I just sent, there's a website link that you can look at as well. So the other question is, uh, will Simplicity replace or work with Miniscript on Liquid? So Miniscript, that's a good question. And that is probably a question that is being asked uh, internally at the development team of Liquid. I'm not exactly aware whether they will replace script because it's not about replacing mini script. It's about replacing script, which mini script, uh, mini script compiles to script. So simplicity would have to either replace or uh, be, let's say, compatible with not. I, I wouldn't think compatible, but coexist or replace script. And that's probably um, something that we will have more details uh, publicly later during the year. But I haven't seen much uh, information, but probably I haven't looked enough. So you would have to look into the simplicity implementation into the Liquid Network, either through the GitHub or through the IRC chat, or you would have to ask the blockchain team themselves. So I hope that answers your questions. And I'll be, if there's anybody who has a little, any more question, I'll take them now. Else I'll, I'll send the, the slides right now as well.
Thank you, Francois, for asking the questions. And I see nobody else is asking. So I guess we'll wait a little bit uh, a more a minute extra. And if nobody else has any question, I guess we can end it then. I just sent the slides on the chat for the presentation, where, which is on a Google presentation. But there doesn't seem to be any other question. So let's just wait a little bit uh, more, 30 seconds extra, else we'll finish this. Okay, well, I'll thank you all. Uh, if there's no more questions, uh, I'll thank you all for the present for assisting. And I'll, uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. And I'll see if you are interested. I'm making a presentation uh, next Thursday at the same time, and we'll be talking about talk tokens on Bitcoin, RGB versus liquid network tokens. Uh, so I'll see you then. Uh, but until then, uh, have a great weekend. Uh, uh, well, end of the week and weekend. Uh, and uh, see you soon.